you've you've got to let the people take over you've got to watch hear the people that are emerging as the leaders and you've got to say go for it right. go for it i mean what i i want to create a legacy if, if i go away my community is going to keep going all right we're here with legend mark afer and today we're going to talk about community we're going to talk about marketing we're going to talk about the future and whatever else in between and, and maybe we'll talk about tom fishburn um <laughs> well i just got a comment today on linkedin he was, he was wondering how i'm going to weave it in so maybe i'll weave it in right now there's a really good uh, uh, uh post by the cartoonist marketing tar- cartoonist who's legend as well and he writes about um curation about sameness actually is what is the initial it was about about ai and uh and he weaved you in there and, and you guys had a little dialogue couldn't be more appropriate about what's going on with the chat ai what's your thoughts on that on how chat's gonna uh you know everybody's so excited about it but i have my reservations <clears throat> excuse me Every, everybody I talk to, literally everyone I talk to, says, I am so excited and I am so terrified. I think that's an appropriate response. Um, and I think when I was an early adopter of, of Chat GPT, and when I tried it out, I wrote words in my blog that I've never written before, never spoken before. And the words were, marketing has been changed forever, right now. I've never said anything even close to that before. I mean, not even the internet. It took us a couple of years to figure out what that was going to be all about, right? Web3, I mean, we're still figuring out. The metaverse, I mean, who knows where that's going to go. But I mean, when you try this thing, you can't help but be impressed. And this is just the baby step. And in the next 12 months... Um, the rules of marketing and content and engagement and creation are going to be completely rewritten and um, an SEO and, you know, just about every, every aspect of business and marketing is going to be reimagined in some way. So, I mean, it is, it it is, it is profound. It's not, it's not perfect, but it's profound. And um, so I'm really excited and somewhat terrified. (laughs) Well, what about the human aspect of it? So what, one of my thoughts is, you know, trying and working with it is we're moving. There's, I, I feel like there's a possibility, an opportunity, an opening where everybody's rushing to this, just like they did back in the day about automation. Mm-hmm. And the winners were sometimes the people that used automation intermittently, or in my opinion, they used it to actually create more human interaction. And there's a differentiation because they were being human. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if this is going to be the same case with content, like well, 100% been, human approved. Yeah. Well, I've been shouting from the rooftops for the last seven or eight years that, I mean, you could see this development coming and I've been shouting from the rooftops that as far as I know, the only thing that can save us in this environment is our personal brand is that if you have a connection, an emotional connection to your audience, your fans, or your customers, you'll be okay. Um, Look, I've been blogging uh, every week since 2009. I've got a podcast. Now we're in our 11th year. I've written 10 books. And the thing I'm not worried about is people stopping, stop, you know, they're going to stop reading my blog or my books or stop listening to my podcast because because of chat GPT. That ain't going to happen. People still appreciate me. I'm known. They have a connection to me. They trust me. I think it's fair to say some people in my audience love me and and they're not going to stop listening to me or they're not going to stop trusting me or coming to me for advice because there's AI in the world. I think if you're, if you're a commodity, if you're an easily changeable part, if you're supplying information instead of insights, you're vulnerable because AI is going to come after you. 
But if you're creating insights, if you're connecting on an emotional level, you're going to be all right. And so that's why I think this idea of the personal brand is it's, it's more important than ever. It's not too late to start. And, um, you know, I teach classes on personal branding. I wrote the best, you know, the, the best selling book on personal branding. And I mean, it's just like, please, please, please do it now. Listen to me. You know, I'm right about this, that, um, you know, the personal brand is the only thing that's going to save us. Couldn't agree more. Now, if I have a personal brand, I'm building like, so if you were to build trust with your audience and suddenly start leveraging chat, uh, this AI and all these features too much and you lose your voice, is it possible that that would erode trust with your audience? Or do you feel like it's just going to be a, just a, it give you an, a, sort of like a, having a thesaurus, like you're able to have a broader spectrum of the way you want to communicate? I think chat GPT does for writers or that, that does for the world what the calculator did for math. So, you know, if you were terrible, I mean, remember, you know, I mean, maybe you're too young to remember this, but I mean, when we started using calculators, calculators, let's say in the eighties and we got, you know, our little Texas instrument calculators, it was the same conversation, right? Educators were up in arms. Well, that's cheating. You know, you're not really doing math. Well, I don't know about you, but I haven't done long form math in 25 years and I'm perfectly happy. The calculator made everyone competent at math. It didn't replace the experts in math. It didn't replace physicists, but it made everyone competent at math. You could do your own taxes. You could do lots of things that, that, that other people could do that were good at math. Now you have a little friend to help you. ChatGPT is the same for writing. ChatGPT makes everyone in the world a competent creator, maybe even an excellent creator. There's someone in my community who uh, is a very busy person, and she's not a very good writer. And she discovered ChatGPT, and she said, guess what? I can blog every day. I can write a book. It's going to unleash my ideas in a totally new way. That's awesome. How am I going to use it? I haven't totally figured that out. I still have a bit of a guilt trip. <laughs> Me too. I feel like like uh, I, I use it and I, I've been playing with it, but I'm like, I feel like I want to make sure I always use my own words as my voice yeah. is there. You know, it's like, no, I, I mean, take it, uh, I manipulate it back to myself. That's I mean, kind of what I've been doing. I mean, when I write a blog post, I just kind of get on a roll. I've got an idea yeah. and I just write the thing. And I, and I don't even really think about chat GPT. I will use it. I think it makes sense when it gets to a point where it can do some heavy lifting for me. But what I've been doing, Scott, is I'll write a blog post. And I've got a badge on my blog post that says 100% human content. I saw that. You know, because that's me. It's me. It's, it's, you know, it's undoubtedly me. I don't think anybody would question that it's me. And I don't want anybody to, to think, you know, is he using chat GPT? And I think when I use chat GPT, I'll be transparent about that too. And I'll say, hey, here's this section right here. I had some help from ChatGPT. I don't care. I'll tell people. I'll be transparent about it. I think that's that maybe that's part of my brand. I love it. So let's let's bridge over to where I really want to dive in, which is belonging to the brand, this book that you've written. Mm -hmm. uh, I was mentioning to you before, I literally launched my first paid area within a community I launched a year ago um, in Mighty Networks. I did an interview with Gina and was really, I've been uh, really enamored with community for a long time, but I was having a real challenge with social platforms. Um, that's why I wanted to do a private virtual community. And when I saw your book, because I've just been looking at my eyes and ears open with my own publication of, of Groundswell coming up. And I saw your book and you said this comment, the line, which is why community is the last great marketing strategy. Tell me more. Well, this idea really started, Scott, in um, I was writing Marketing Rebellion in 2018. Marketing Rebellion was a wake-up call 
Um, I just think that, that marketers get into these trenches and they say, okay, well, we need to learn a little bit about how to be better in our Facebook ads. How do we iterate on our SEO and our content? And meanwhile, uh, the human race has, uh, has, the, has the power of all the accumulated knowledge of our history in the palm of their hands. And they expect something more from our marketing, from our companies, other than being manipulated. So that was like the marketing rebellion was like a whack across the head saying, wake up. There was a chapter in that book about belonging and community. And I predicted that community would become a more important part of marketing because a lot of the things we've relied on, like advertising, are fading away in importance. We're in a streaming economy. You know, I, I watch TV all night long. I'll never see an ad. I'll listen to music all day long. I'll never hear an ad. I'll listen to audiobooks of my favorite authors. I'll never hear an ad. So I'm totally you know, consuming content every spare moment of the day, and I'm not hearing any marketing messaging. We've got to find something else. And community was the first marketing strategy. You know, our ancestors would go down the street to their favorite people selling meat, selling flowers, selling clothes. And those people in those stores, they knew them. We were part of a big economic community and they knew our names and they knew our favorites and they knew our children and they knew when we were sick and they knew when we needed help. I've never belonged to something like that in, in my, you know, in my city. And I long to belong to something like that. And we all do. And we've got an opportunity to find that again. And that's why I think it's the most overlooked opportunity in the history of marketing opportunities because it's staring us right in the face. Community isn't new, but almost no one is looking at, looking at it from a brand marketing perspective. Most communities fail because we try to sell more stuff. And that is not a reason to, for people to want to gather. Of the, of the communities that make it, 70% are focused on transactions. Customer self-service. You have a problem with your software, go to our community, people will figure it out. You know, that's fine. But we're missing the biggest opportunity of all. It's what we started talking about. With ChatGPT, it's the emotional connection. That's everything. Everything in marketing is if you have that, um, that emotional connection. Think about the power of community. If people are connected to your community and they want to be there because this is where they get support, this is where they get validation, this is where they're heard, this is where their friends are, it creates a, a layer of emotional switching costs. How could I ever leave this brand? I belong to this community. I belong to this brand. I'm never going to leave this thing. And so that's why I say when all this other crap finally goes away, when we stop interrupting people, stop intercepting people, stop spamming them, stop bothering them with robocalls and all this stuff, I'm embarrassed to say, we call marketing today. Here's the last thing standing, community. It's always been there and it always will. And it's time to reimagine marketing in this context. Do you think there'll be um, community fatigue? A little bit like app or social media fatigue? Like I'm just like, how many communities can be part of? I, I, I think in some ways, um, it, it, maybe it's like, content marketing 10 years ago where it starts out as a novelty, but then if everybody's doing it, it's not a novelty anymore. Um, but for marketing to be great, for marketing to work, you know, it's got to deliver some incredible value, some unique value. Whether you have a community, whether you have content, whether you do um, uh, an ad for people to spend time with you, 
you're, you've got to earn that time. In a community, it's like anything else. You're competing with the Mandalorian. You're competing with video games. You're pe- competing with pictures of my grandkids on Facebook. Um, so look, marketing is, you know, community is hard, but marketing is hard. Uh, you know, I've got, you know, I've got, I've got gray hair, silver, let's say. <laughs> I can say with some authority, this is the hardest time to be in marketing. So look, if you're going to work hard, why not work on something that's going to, to really work? And, and, and I think the opportunity today is community. That's, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, that's that I, when you said a couple of gems there. One is it's hard. Like, what do you think is going to trip people up? Is it the short termism? Is it trying to ROI it too soon? Is it like trying to um, uh, put yourself in the middle? Like, what do you see as being the, the, the red flags or the pitfalls that are going to prevent people from really making this work? And they're going to throw up hands and go, this didn't work. But really, they just didn't play it through or do it properly. Yeah. Well, I think my book, chapter by chapter, points out the pitfalls. I mean, I think the book is a is a framework to build a successful community. And, and the first chapter, well, first I get through the business case. This is why we need this now. There are trends colliding in a way that point, I think, in an unassailable not even debatable way that community has got to be part of our future. So that's number one. Here's the, what are some of those trends? I'm curious. Well, number one is something we've talked about here is that the way we used to do marketing just doesn't work anymore. People are blocking it out. So that's number one. We we've got to find something new. Number two is that I would say, the number one business megatrend in the world right now is mental health. It's going to impact how we market. It's going to impact how we, how we employ people. It's going to impact our workplace. It's going to impact the economics of our business. I mean, it's showing up everywhere and every day. And if you don't think mental health is like the number one mega trend of our generation, read the news. <laughs> it's it's in the news every day. So that's trend number two. And and so people long to belong. And community is not just marketing it that works, it's marketing that heals. We need community. We need it more than ever. Our customers are crying out for it. That's number two. Number three, all the smart people in Silicon Valley are spending millions and millions and millions of dollars on new ways for people to connect and belong. So we hear these mysterious words like Web3, tokenized economies, NFTs, metaverse. When you cut through all the jargon, it's these are really cool ways to get together. These are like really cool ways that we can like connect to each other and belong. So don't be confused by, you know, all like all the bad stuff in the news about NFTs and all the weird things about Web3 and all the mysterious things about the metaverse. What it really gets down to is that these are cool new ways for us to get together. And by the way, young people today are surging into these areas. And I talk about that at the end of the book, the new communities, the new digital campfires being created by Gen Z using these new technologies. So you put those three things together and there's no question in my mind that community is the future of marketing. I was somewhat validated. I'm not a bragging man, but Scott, I'll do a mic drop moment here. The the day I wrote the last words of the book, you know, I'm ready to go. Huge sense of relief. I'm done. The last words are done. McKinsey releases a major research report that concludes community is the next best bit, big thing in marketing. Boom. Damn right it is. 
I just spent the last two years of my life proving it. Here's the book. So it's the right book at the right time. I, 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 I called it right. And, and, and I, I, I actually, I, I just absolutely um, killed it with this book. It's the right book at the right time. You're like warming my heart. My book comes out on March 22nd. It's called Groundswell. And it's basically building a community that makes yeah. an impact. Yeah. And, and it's, I spent three years writing it. And I feel the exact same way. It's like right place, right time. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're talking about, are you really surprised me with the new idea I didn't even think of, which was the trend about wellness. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't even think of that. Like, so marketing that heals, like, I, so I started a group on Clubhouse um, in 2020 when it was like uh, in the middle of COVID and I started rooms called Mindful Marketer and I couldn't believe how much people were really interested in this. Like, like the idea of like just kind of approaching marketing differently with like, you know, meditation or thinking differently, laws of the universe and nature. And, and, and there were so many people that were in wellness that were really in, like engaged in this conversation that I started my own sub community called Mindful Marketer. And I went on to do a podcast with Guru Singh. He's a, a, a yogi. And, and we talked and did this episode about spirituality, nature, universe, wellness, and marketing. And it's still to this day, it's my number one downloaded episode, more than Dave Navarro from the Chili Peppers. And then like, it's so, so we've now gone on to record this whole thing on mindful marketing. But I never really thought about what you just said, which was wellness. I mean, it was there. So when you think of wellness and marketing that heals, if I'm a brand and a shoe company, why would I want a community about wellness when I just want to sell shoes? Or it's what's the connection? Wellness. It's not about wellness. It's one of the trends. Yeah. It, no. So so here's like here's the, the the idea I think people need to hang on to is that number one, this book I wrote, it's a business book. It's a framework to think about community as a new completely overlooked tool in the toolbox of marketing. All right. Now, chapter three in this book, I spend the whole chapter talking about the business benefits. Amazing. Just amazing. It's like when you, after you read this book, there's no way you can't think about marketing, about marketing without thinking about community. There's no way. So number one, this is a business book. However, when people are in a community, it's, it's, it's not just something that we want to be in a community. We literally need to be in a community for our psychological health, our sociological health. There's even a little passage in the book talking about research that shows for our physical health. We need community. So what I'm saying is this is commun- This is marketing that works. But a, I'm not saying, hey, everybody, start a community and heal the world. What I'm saying is start, start a community because your freaking marketing probably doesn't work anymore. This is something <laughs> new to think about. It's true. However, think about this. What if you created the most belonging company? What if you created the most belonging podcast, the most belonging university, the most belonging symphony, the most belonging car company? Isn't that something to be proud of? Wouldn't that be really cool that people are connected to us in this deep emotional way? They belong And the side benefit is we're healing them because they need this. They need the validation. They need to know they're they're being heard. They're being acknowledged. But it's also helping our company. I think it's something we can be proud of. It's not just going to work. It's something we can be proud of as business professionals. How do you see possibly like like one of the business cases being – community is actually maybe a wellspring for innovation. I mean, you're, you're, you're hearing discussions in a way that you never would otherwise. Uh, you know, like when people come to me in marketing, sometimes they come and go, I got this product, you know, can you help market it? And I'm always going, wouldn't it be better if you had 
the audience instead of us trying to find it and then you serve the audience, like flip the script a little bit. How, what's your thought in the book and what have you described in terms of the innovation impact? Because I got to believe that that's something you touched on. Well, it's a huge part of the book. Uh, and um, there's lots of case studies about that in, in, in the book. Um, I think you need to think about in community is what, what's, what kind of impact do we want to make on the world? And how could we make that impact bigger through community? One recent example that was in the news is that uh, Lego has a huge community devoted to innovation. And if someone comes up with a good idea and the community kind of votes, you know, upvotes this idea, that it can be launched as a product. And if it's launched as a product, the people that develop this idea in the community, they share in the IP and they share in the money. Lego just launched a whole new product line that competes with jigsaw puzzles. So a jigsaw puzzle is a popular family activity, especially around the holidays. What if you had a project you could build together with Legos that could compete with jigsaw puzzles, right? So it's more, more of an adult thing. So they're, they're creating like flower arrangements and like, like succulent arrangements that are made out of Lego that the whole family can do as a, as a holiday activity. That came from the community. This is a whole new line uh, of thinking, a whole new market segment that cr was created by people in their community. And if you look at the best managed companies in the world, they're all doing this, right? Nike, Ikea, you know, we mentioned Lego. And certainly that's happening in my own community. I have a community dedicated to learning about the future of marketing. I am, uh, almost every idea I talk about in my books, in my podcast, in my blog, in my speeches, it's some idea that originated in this community. My community has become my university. It's teaching me. It's taking me new ways. It's connecting me to the ideas of brilliant people all around the world. And it's making me a better writer, speaker, and professional. Amazing. And, I, and that's that's awesome. I mean, that's what I'm looking forward to. I do have that to a degree, but I'm not as invested as you are yet. But now it's like starting to happen for me. What do you see as the intersection with um, tokenization and say Web3 mm -hmm. in say a, 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 a community setting versus is Web3 a new community? Like I'm thinking about like myself, I launched my own currency. Um, and I'm treating, I, my, one of my backgrounds way back in the day was loyalty programs. I'm treating it as a way of, of incentivizing engagement inside my community. I'm not trying to hype it. I'm, I'm going, if you hold on to it, we're going to have some special things that only our coin can buy, or you can just go cash it out. But I'm just using it as I give, I'm, I literally invested in it. And I'm going, I'm just going to give it all away. Cause I want my community to kind of like, just find a different way. And that's what I'm testing. What are you seeing as the intersection for, in your perspective of the future, even of NFTs, tokenization inside the community? Well, that's, that's a, it's a huge topic. <clears throat> I mean, my community started based on a token, on, on a token. <clears throat> that's how we all got together in the first place. Um, and I love the bi-directional aspect of having a token to reward people. Uh, and again, that's part of like, seeing people, acknowledging people, rewarding people, granting them status in the community. There's a case study in the book that is absolutely inspiring and magnificent of an entire community, maybe the fastest growing community I've ever seen, that's completely built on NFTs. It's like you own the NFT, you get into this community, and now you're with this like-minded group of people that are using their NFT these NFTs to build games together, to build content together, to build new businesses together. It's absolutely incredible. And this is something that could not have happened five years ago. We now have this community of thousands of people that own these NFTs and have built this fast growing community. And it's, it's just completely enabled by this new technology. 
Yeah, the NFT piece outside of tokens is really interesting. Like we're going to be launching one that's going to create utility access. And and what I want to do is I'm just I'm flying this to you because I'm like you're yeah I just would love to get your thought on it. Is I'm 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 thinking about doing a short limited edition only to the OGs, the original people that join early before all the the, the stuff that I'm building in, is launched. And, and just style them out and give them access that no one else gets, mm-hmm. even though they didn't pay for it. It just becomes like this token bonus round so that the next people that members would go, wow, the OG, the original people were taken care of. And of course, I'm going to tear out more stuff, but that's one of the ideas I have with uh, NFT, but it's really about utility in my mind, what I want to do with it. Yeah, it, it, it can be, and it should be. I, I think um, for me, it comes with its own, special challenge because for many people um utility in an F- nft might you know it means access it means something mm-hmm. special right and so for me i've got to be careful about like accessing my business to death <laughs> right you know i mean because you know i mean here i mean here's like one of the things we're doing in my community is we are writing a book together okay so this is cool it's going to be really cool it's going to work and so, of course, everybody goes to this idea. All right, well, let's create an NFT. And if they buy the book, they get this NFT and it gives them access to all this special stuff. Okay, now let's think this through. When you sell a book, you're going to, you know, if you self-publish a book, you're going to make eight bucks. So why would you create special access for someone that's given you eight bucks? <laughs> Now, it gets worse because this community-driven book is written by 35 people. So really, you're getting one thirty-fifth of eight bucks. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you're going to do what? So, I mean, you got to apply good business sense to this. That, you know, NFTs are fun and they're sexy and they're cool. But, you, you, you know, you can access yourself to death as a business. you got to be smart about it. But, it, but it's, you know, I, I, I like your idea of of using it to 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 create status to say hey i was first i'm an og and boom you know here we go you know th- this I, I i feel special in this community because i've got this nft yeah i've been part of communities where the, it changes all the time and the utility changes and you just don't trust the community because they didn't think through the mm-hmm. utility how much can you weave and 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 navigate in a community building a community and how much do you need to have known up front where you don't lose trust like well people is it based on if i just trust you and if i'm going to make a move uh you know that's fine or do you see any any sort of red flags or, or big pitfalls if there's too much changes in a community or is that even a discussion well i think to be successful in a community it takes a certain amount of courage because, you know, what we learned in business school is here's what I am with a leader. As a leader, I have a vision. I communicate my vision accurately. I, you know, provide people with the, with the support and the resources to help create this vision. Well, when you get into a community, it's really become someone else's vision it becomes the community's vision and you know and an example in my own community is uh look you know i i figured people like me they trust me i'm known for a few things if you're in my community that's probably what you want to know about personal branding writing books giving speeches well that was my expectation of what we would be getting into in my community and almost right away, the community took it someplace else. And it's they took it to a better place, a bigger place, a more relevant place. So it's a bigger, greater, more interesting, more innovative community because I let go. I have this new mindset, this new courage to, to reward people and enable people and give them you know, the, the, the validation to, to take it someplace else. And the other day, someone in the community said, Hey, 
a few of us in the community want to start this project. What do you think? I said, go for it. As long as it doesn't take my time, go do it. You know, it's now this new community project and there's going to be a lot of innovation, a lot of excitement. And it's awesome. Completely awesome. Wasn't my idea, but it's going to make the community better and other people are leading it. I don't have to lead it. If I lead it, I'm a failure. It's a cult of personality. You've got to let the community go. Interesting. Because mine's really right now a leader led. That's me. Like I'm just mostly leading the direction we're talking about. And it's, it's, it's not a community, it's an audience. Oh, good point. And an audience is fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have an audience. I have an audience that reads my blog, but they're, the people that read my blog don't connect. There is no communion. There is no shared purpose. It's a, but they love me and they support me and they buy everything. But you know, if if, if it, so, if you if you start, you know, a site and you say, okay, here I am, I'm going to continue to teach you and lead you, then it's not a community. It's an audience. You got to, you, you, you've, you've got to let the people take over. You got to watch, hear the people that are emerging as the leaders. And you've got to say, go for it. Right. Go for it. I mean, what I, I want to create a legacy. If, if I go away, my community is going to keep going. That's exactly how I feel. So my, my one main area right now is that I just launched the new community. That's where I'm actually creating engagement, letting members like that's so I'm kind of creating a open community area inside of, of my broader audience community. And then you just got to pay to access that. And that allows you to kind of go start creating topics, talking with each other, all that kind of stuff. It's very new, but that's, that's kind of my intention is having a little bit of a hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, so that we have like one place I'm using my inner circle as sort of like, a place to hear all things about what I'm up to. And then the community that you can go over there and that's, you can start talking about marketing or whatever you want to, or my, or in this case, mindful marketing as well. Mm -hmm. Good. So what's the, what's next with community? If you think about the web three tokenization, is there anything else that's sort of like the future of where community is going? Like the way that we're envisioning them, I'm using a private community in a, on a private platform. What do you see as being, the future is it metaverse is it like what does that look like well when i think about the future i think about um you know right now you got to look at gen z um and 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 gen z is is taking community and relationships into some unexpected places they are fully embracing the new ideas they're fully embracing web3 metaverse they're 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 setting up shop in in Discord. I saw a statistic, something like um, thirty eight percent of Gen Z um, have some connection to a community in Discord. Okay, so th this is significant because from a from a business perspective, um, you know, first of all, Gen Z are. They're not babies. I mean, Gen Z, we just had in America, the first Gen Z elected to Congress. They're buying stuff, you know, in the next five years, they're going to be creating their own companies and leading their own companies. So, I mean, Gen Z, they're, they're here, they're now, it's happening, they're taking over and they are not participating. They're not in Facebook groups. They're not in LinkedIn groups. They're not normally in Reddit groups. They're setting up their own digital campfires. They're blockading themselves from the rest of the world and keeping us out. They're keeping us out as businesses. They're keeping us out as invaders. And so, you know, the cool thing is they're fully embracing community. They're validating the ideas in my book. 85% um, of Gen Z led businesses start with community as their marketing. They're looking at all this advertising stuff, you know, all these older people are doing and they're saying, why in the world would we do something like that? That is just the dumbest thing. I wouldn't want to be treated like that. I'm not going to spend my money on that. 
So, I mean, Gen Z is, is, is there, it's validating, you know, what I have in my book is that this is the future. They are the future. They are showing us the way. So as a business, we can be very humble and, and watch them teach us how to do this. But the scary thing is for business is that they don't want us in, you know, um, you know, we can use our social listening platforms and we could see our consumer sentiment on Facebook and we can see our consumers, you know, sharing products and ideas on Twitter. That's irrelevant. I mean, Gen Z is, is not there. And week by week and month by month, these social listening platforms that we have built our businesses on and our social media strategies on are going away. So there's a huge opportunity and there's a huge threat by how these new technologies are being embraced. That was long. Um, when you think about with Gen Z, they're starting with community first. That could totally shape the entire way that a, a business model is created, like versus we're adding community to my the business, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What do you see the difference? Like, the, what do you think is the um, incredible advantages by actually starting with community first versus adding it? Well, uh, so belonging to the, my brand is my is my tenth book. And I did something different in this book that I've never done before. I devoted an entire chapter to one person. And that person has created an incredible business through community. It's not a business that added community. It's a business that started with community. So um, the person is someone who I com just completely admire. She is a, an amazing entrepreneur and a true visionary when it comes to community. Her name is Dana Malstaff. And about uh, you know, seven, eight years ago, Dana had a business. She was an entrepreneur. She was going for it and she became pregnant. And um, she was getting like conflicted advice. Some people were saying, well, you really, you can't give up this business. And other people were saying, you can't really give up this opportunity of motherhood. She said, I want to do both and I need to find a way to, to surround myself with people and, and to help us do this, to be entrepreneurs who are mothers. So she started talking about these ideas in a Facebook group and she got a few people who were interested. She said, I'm going to start my own Facebook group called Boss Mom. In nine months, she had a six-figure income. Her business has been doubling every year. She now has almost 80,000 people in her group. She's got about a million dollars in revenue with no sales, with no marketing department, with no marketing budget. The community is the business. Because if you have 80,000 people who love you and believe in you, they're going to buy everything you have. So every so she creates a new video series. She sells a new course. She creates a new paid membership. She creates an event and it just sells out because she doesn't need to do an, she doesn't need SEO. She doesn't need branded content. She doesn't need Facebook ads. It's mar, it's the ultimate marketing with no marketing. It's a community, right? It's the ultimate marketing, but there's no marketing. That is the future. That's what I talk about in this book. How to market without marketing. It's beautiful. And so say, for example, I want, I don't want, I don't have the patience, the gumption or the desire to build a community, but I'm, but I know community is important. What do you see as a strategy for that person? Is it to become, um, you know, Inside a community, do you see a future of community clustering of some kind or community collectives or a community accelerator? What do you see as being somebody that wants to benefit from this trend, but they don't necessarily want to be the one, you know, managing it or leading it? Uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. I mean, as a, I think as an individual, 
there are lots of ways we can benefit from community, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. in my own community, I'm becoming, my job is to become an individual. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's my job. Um, And, and Dana talks about this too with boss mom. I mean, her, her, her job is to become eventually to become invisible. Uh, and, and she's elevating other people to lead the community just as I am in my community. So the community, it's, it's, it's self-sustaining, you know, without a paid staff, I don't have a paid staff. I mean, I have people who are passionate, who want to get things done. And that's what's, that's what's driving the community. So to that extent, I mean, I have people like I had a, I had a conversation this morning with someone in my community and I said, you are becoming a star. He said, yeah. And it's all because of this community because I'm learning and I'm building new relationships that are helping my career. So on an individual level, um, there's massive opportunity to, to hook up to the right community. You know, in terms of a business, you know, I don't really think there's a shortcut. Either you, you know, either you do it, you know, or 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 you don't. Um, yeah, but I think on an individual level, there's massive opportunities for for moving ahead in this world by being part of a community. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, my thought was like I get definitely the the personal brand of the individual benefits, but I was like, well, what if you're, you know, I'm a, I'm a small business and I've got an Etsy business and. I don't want to build a community, but I know it's really important. I'm going to be part of one. I think you just described the way, which is you just somehow their connectedness with other business people. There's you're thriving because you have relationships inside of a community um, yeah. is probably the benefit. The strategy. Think, you know, I think it's time to challenge the conventional thinking about, you know, look, you know, um, why not? You're going to spend, if you're a business, you're going to spend money on marketing. You're going to spend time on marketing and marketing is hard. Why not spend time on marketing that people actually want? You know, why, why clutter up their mailboxes and hurt the environment with direct mail? Why piss people off with lead nurturing, which basically means I'm going to keep bothering you until you block me. (laughs) <laughs> brow beating you know um i mean i think it's just time to to that that's that was really the, the 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 call to action of my book marketing rebellion is just to like look up just just look up at what you're doing just stop keep stop doing the things that that you think are marketing that people hate if you're doing things that people hate stop it and you know what that is because you're a consumer too. If you're doing things to your customers that you know you'd hate, you know, you know, just just stop it and think about what could I do that would that would make people appreciate me and people love me. And I mean, number one has got to be community. It's the only kind of community, kind of marketing that I know of that people really want and they need. So it's got to be something you think about. I mean, you just, I just love how you perceive things. I I just share so much of the same thinking. It's like, we got to change the conventions here and it's not working. A lot of marketing is so impotent. And what do you think it's going to take for this change to take hold? I mean, it's already happening, but do you see a tipping point? Like, do you see, like, I look at COVID, right? COVID has actually probably leaned into this community being so important. We've never felt more isolated. It's like an accelerant. Yeah, one hundred percent. What What do you think is a tipping point though, where this is going to become really the the? It's going to become pervasive, you know, because right now this is like for some people this is like, what is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I what think, is like? Because you know, you've seen so many trends take hold and change over your whole career. Yeah, you must have some sense when you go. I think this is going to be. A well, I think point. you know. I, I think we are at the tipping point because I mentioned you know these three mega trends are coming together, and 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 it just it, to me it's just uh, you know crystal clear that this is what's next and this is the answer. I mean, think about it this way: 
so many of our brands are built, have been built on advertising. So many of our consumer product brands, so many of our automobile brands, and there's only one day a year they're relevant. The Super Bowl. That's the only day in the year that people watch ads and talk about ads. The rest of the year, people do spend extra money to avoid ads. They spend, they go to streaming services. They'll buy Spotify Premium. They'll do Amazon Plus. They'll do everything. You know, we'll spend, have a subscription for Disney Plus because I don't want to see the freaking ads. Um, 800 million people in the world have ad blockers on their smart devices. It's the biggest consumer rebellion in history. So um, I think I think we're we're at the tipping point. I mean, I think this was this was one of the saddest things that you know the ad industry is just in turmoil. And I think it was the year before last, the major uh, the major news story coming out of the big Cannes Festival in France every year, where all the big brands and all the marketing people go is that they were begging Netflix to show ads because people just don't see ads anymore. Well, isn't that a good marketing and advertising to find any place that we're being left alone to go, that's the place to go? That's the place to go. (laughs) And it's just like, oh my God. I mean, you people are just just so crazy. Relentless. (laughs) Netflix does have an advertising option now, but it's not, it's because it's an economic reality, not because of the pressure from the advertising people, but it's like, they've got all this money. They need to tell these brand stories. Where are they going to go when nobody sees their ads anymore, except one day a year? And I'm, you know, being provocative here, of course, there's always going to be a place for advertising, but our, you know, my consumption of advertising is down 95% in the last five years because I've got all these subscriptions. I don't want it. I avoid it. And and so companies, it's got to be, they've got to find another way. And, you know, and, and what I'm showing in my book is here's a map. Here's a new place to go. Think about this. Last year, I launched a brand. I did a brand strategy. It was for a pole fitness company. And they, um, we rebranded them. They actually had a, they were on Facebook, but they kept getting taken down. And when I launched the brand, we rebranded, it was called Vertica. The tagline I came up with was every body belongs. It's very much about body image, women's body image. And we, we set them up into a building a community. They're now franchising and they, they've taken my book as a playbook and, and they've just blown up. And when I saw your book come out, I sent it to her. I sent her I, the day it came out. I'm like, oh my God, you got to check. Mark just wrote a book about our tag. Exactly. And, and I was just like, and I, and, I, and she, I just was on a call with them recently, but introducing new people. And you know what they said to me, the new franchise, they said, we want to be belong to something and we want to have impact. That's why I'm looking at franchise. And that's what attracted me to your brand. And I was like, there it is. It's so direct in terms of that's a reason people are coming to them is there's a shift that's going on. Oh, it wasn't 100%. about how much profit it was, it was profitable. And, and the thing is, the factors. It's, it's still such a new idea. And, and big, all these big companies that have built their brands on advertising, they're, they're gonna, it's going to be a lot easier for small to medium-sized businesses to do this than the big, big, big brands. Um, you know, that's exciting. People, that's an yeah. exciting advantage that most people feel they're disadvantaged. Yeah. I mean, I'm a small, I'm a small brand. I'm a small company. I know everybody in my community, right? And we're, we're building new things together. You know, we're writing a book together. We're doing experiments in the metaverse together. We're doing experiments. We're launching NFTs together. We're, uh, creating a podcast together, right? We're launching all these things. It's not all me, but but you know we're 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 you can build things more 
you can have a bigger impact if you do things together rather than just a person like me. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. Do a marketing experiment, share the outcome, work together, mastermind it, help people through. I mean, it's just accelerating everybody. I mean, it's been so frustrating for most entrepreneurs being a solopreneur or or relying on handing the keys to a marketing department. This gives them a little different sort of set of ways of navigating and marketing on their terms, I think. And your book is a blueprint, a framework, and it definitely, uh, I think this is, I was so excited about this this interview because I'm like, it felt so aligned with everything you, you ever published, but this specifically is game changer. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, and uh, do you have anything, is, well, how can people follow you and where would you like them to go? Well, first, yeah, thanks so much for, for having me and for helping me spread the words about these ideas. Um, it's, it's easy to find me. You might not remember how to spell Schaefer. Nobody does. But if you can remember businesses grow, you can find me. So businesses grow is my website and you can find my blog, my podcast, all my social connections. Um, you know, I think the books we mentioned today, Belonging to the Brand is the new one. You mentioned Marketing Rebellion. <clears throat> we mentioned the personal branding book, Known. You can, all, you can find all of those on my website. Thank you. And I'll make sure all those are in the show notes as well. And thank you, everyone, for listening today. Uh, this was an incredible episode. Uh, until next time, please, if you want to leave a voicemail, go to the link on groundschool.fm and uh, leave me a voicemail on SpeakPipe or go to the community on Inner Circle, groundschoolinnercircle.com. Post a note on the, when I put the post about the podcast and let's hear about it. Let's hear what you think and what would you like me to ask next time. Or maybe I'll get him back on the show and we'll follow up with this call. So until next time, mahalo.